Hi. Hi, guys. Good morning. I'm Jason here at RoofSnap. I'm Katrina. We're here to uh, go over um, RoofSnap software, Measuring 101. Yep. So we're going to uh, go in uh, here on the RoofSnap app, which, uh, as you can see now, we've got this great picture-in-picture -picture functionality, finally. So we can see you and you can see us. Uh, throughout the demonstration. It blocks a little bit of our uh, you know, primary screen here, but that should be fine. Uh, we'll be able to go in and show you all the functionality here within RoofSnap. So what should we talk about first today, Katrina? We always like to give them a few minutes to uh, uh, join the call, make sure everybody has an opportunity to, uh, to get uh, logged in before we get started here. Yeah. Uh, why don't we uh, take a minute to talk about uh, Maybe our, um, our our sketches. Okay, great. So in doing so, I'm going to just tap on the manage materials tile there, roof snap. That hops us over to the website. I don't actually have to log in um, initially to take a look at some of our pricing platforms here. Um, but as some of you may have seen, we've sent out an email fairly recently to talk about uh, sketches, our sketch ordering service. Now, this is a um, a service, uh, but it's specifically only for our subscription customers. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the ability to um, uh, measure for any non-subscribers at the moment. Mm -hmm. But the way this works is, uh, so for those of you who have used RoofSnap, you know that you can create a project and from existing uh, integrated imagery or from your drone image, you can capture that image and draw out all, all the lines of the roof. Well, in SketchUp, we'll do that for you. Uh, but instead of emailing you some kind of a report, we'll upload the project just like, uh, well, we will upload it right into your account so it'll look like a project that you've made within RoofSnap. And then you can use that project to uh, go in and estimate based on the measurements of that roof drawing. And so we have two different products within the Sketchos. Uh, we have the half snap and the full snap. Um, the half snap, uh, most of you will be familiar with, with what this is providing here. So if we just outline the roof and put in the predominant pitch, we're going to get squares. We're not going to get our ridges, eaves, um, valleys, and all that good stuff. But if you do estimating based on a per square charge, then the half snap may be the perfect product for you. And it is only and always $9. Um, Katrina, when, it, when available, what kind of imagery are we going to use? We're going to use near map imagery, and that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, so near map is uh, an imagery partner we've got, and uh, they typically fly multiple times a year. Uh, so you can find an image with uh, little to no tree coverage, uh, shadows, <clears throat> things like that, uh, really high quality, high definition uh, imagery here to, to draw from. And so with uh, Sketchos order, of course, uh, you do get that near map image when the imagery is available. Yeah, so for those of you who don't have near map at the moment, because uh, near map they are um, a, uh, well, they're a, they're a private company and they uh, charge for access to their imagery. And so, you know, we have some customers who have subscriptions to near map. And through RoofSnap, you can log right in and use your own access to near map imagery. Um, but for the time being, if you uh, go to measure a roof and you see that it's covered with trees because the Google image is taken, you know, in the summertime, um, one way to get a near map image for your project um, pre-drawn would be to order um, our SketchUp's. The full snap, that's going to be, uh, you know, what you expect for all uh, information for the roof. Uh, so we're going to draw all lines and label them. And we're going to label all facets um, with their pitch. And we're going to label dormers. And we're going to label low sloped areas and so forth and so on. The pricing for residential homes breaks down based on the square count. And then if you have something that's over 80 square, or if you expect it to be over 80 square, give us a call. And we'll provide you custom pricing uh, for that. If you have commercial properties, uh, typically, you know, very flat, just simple rectangular commercial properties. We're uh, given custom pricing, but we're charging in the you know nine to fifteen dollar range for those easy commercial buildings. And then for multifamily, also please give us a call, give us the address. We'll take a look at the site, um, maybe see you know how many buildings there are. If uh, uh, we can do a quick analysis of the property, then we can provide you a custom quote for multifamily properties. 
And that's how our schedules work. So we're drawing uh, Monday through Saturday, 7 to 7. We'll be extending our hours even beyond that here before too long. Um, and right now we have a typical two-hour turnaround time from when you place the order. Uh, so let me show you how you do that. In order to place the order as a subscriber, you'll have to log in to RoofSnap. So I'm going to tap on the login button here on the upper right-hand corner. Go ahead and log in. And you'll tap on SketchUps in the upper right-hand corner. This is going to load a dashboard environment as well so that you can see all of the projects that you have previously ordered and their status. You can even filter out a report um, with you know, whatever dates that you want to put in here and export it out as a CSV file. Uh, that way you can see a report of all the projects that you've ordered from any time frame. If you tap on Request New Order, you're going to get a pop-up window here where, again, it's going to remind you of the pricing. Go ahead and give your project a name. Go ahead and search right here in this little Google search uh, window the address. So as you begin to type, you'll see addresses will begin to appear. And then you just tap on the one that you want. What that'll do is load in the address in the step three, where you're going to verify the address, make sure that the zip code and everything is right. And then down here in step four is where you're going to select the subuser, possibly the salesman or one of your colleagues or yourself, and then the snap type. So if you want uh, the full snap or the half snap, you can change the, uh, the project type or the snap type there. Lastly, um, add any notes for your sketch tech as needed. Uh, we recommend, if, if you happen to know if there is a um, detached garage or if there is um, uh, any special concern on the house that we would need to know that might be difficult to see from overhead, go ahead and put that in the notes field there. And then tap on the order button, and that'll send it to us, and we'll get it drawn and sent back to you. All right. Let's, uh, let's dive in. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So for today, um, we did go ahead and pick uh, a house here in a neighborhood not too far away. But I want to show you when you first start a project, uh, you've got two options, the project map and the start new project, one of these two tiles on the main screen. The project map is going to zoom in to your location using your GPS on your device. And if I just move over to this little residential neighborhood here, Let's say, for example, that I am um, on a call, maybe I'm canvassing a neighborhood, or maybe I'm at an appointment, and I need to measure this roof, and I'm, I'm literally sitting in my truck right in the driveway. Well, as you can see, by accidentally even just tapping there, um, I dropped a pin. But let's press and hold right on the house, and drop a pin, and it'll pull in that address. And if I hit the Create button, it's going to go ahead and create a new project with that address. If I tap on the Start New Project, First of all, it will, it will um, uh, prompt me. Thank you. I got it at the same time. It will prompt me to select an office here and, of course, give it a project name. And here, when that pin was dropped, if we had tapped on the Create New Project, it would have pre-populated all of these fields, address, city, state, and zip. Um, this start new project method, you know, this is when you're at home or when you're um, in the office and you're drawing the house before you go to the appointment. Um, so we would be able to type in the address there. So we've already started uh, down here in the new lead, a project for today called webinar. So we'll go ahead and tap on that. And we've got the address here, city, state, zip. And if we needed to add billing information, if it was uh, possibly a rental or some sort of a commercial property, we could add separate billing info. And then if it was insurance related, we could add insurance details down here at the bottom as well. Tapping on the edit button allows you to then go in and put your cursor in these different fields. Tap on the done button brings us back out. And Katrina will have to be careful today because if my cursor ever moves right below schedule event, you know what? Actually, we can see everything. We can even see the little eye button. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do with this address is go ahead right into the roof snap, second step here of creating the project. And the first thing that you'll notice is we automatically get a pop-up window with all these different map types. 
Google Satellite has already preloaded. And let's zoom in and take a closer look at Google Satellite. I'm just going to move my cursor off into the map portion of the screen and tap. Because that little dialog window go away. Now I can really zoom in on this address. And this Google image is actually quite good. There's no tree coverage. It's pretty straight overhead. There aren't any terribly strong shadows. I would feel very comfortable drawing this roof from this image. However, we may have an even better image. So let's go to Apple Flyover. Apple Flyover in this region is some 3D imagery. It's been, um, it's been captured from multiple different angles of imagery and stitched together. And we'll look at it in more detail here before, uh, before too long. Um, and I would feel comfortable drawing the roof from this image as well. And you'll notice uh, the Apple Flyover doesn't allow you to zoom in as far as the Google imagery. Not initially. Initially, yep. but once you snap it, uh, you can pan and zoom and get very close in to uh, draw details. Google Hybrid here, this is the same as Google Satellite. It just adds the street names. Apple Satellite is not the same as Apple Flyover. And in your area, if Apple Flyover is not available, it's going to default and load the Apple Satellite. So let's take a look at that. There we go. So if you get an image like this, when you've tried to load your Apple Flyover, just know that immediately that this is not Apple Flyover. This is um, very low resolution satellite imagery that Apple has had for ages. Uh, we do not recommend that you try to measure uh, the roof with this image uh, unless there's absolutely no other option. Um, basically, the, the um, Accuracy is going to be really, really low on this image because it's so far away. It's so small. Um, unfortunately, when you when you plug into Apple, you get one. When you when you take one, you get both, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's what the Apple satellite looks like. If at all possible, try to use any other image um, than that. Uh, now, of course, the gold standard is near map. So let's go ahead and load in some near map imagery here. And you'll see that they've been flying a lot, even since April 15th of 2015, so about two years now, they've got six captures. Nice. Um, and I always look for one in the spring before the leaves start to, uh, start to cover all the trees. So let's try this March 5th. And you see this little forest here on the left, just all the leaves fell off. And that's a pretty good image. Here's what I look for. Minimal shadows top-down view. So even when I come to the rakes here on the side, I want to see that those rakes are pretty straight. And in this image, they are really straight, which is great. So this is a fantastic image. Let's take a look at March 22nd, 2016 as a comparison. You know, that's even better. That has fewer shadows. And the rakes are still nice and straight as well. So that's my top pick so far. Let's go to April 15th of 2015. See how this one, see how the, well, the rakes are pretty straight. But you see how they look like they're just a little bit tapered in? Katrina? Yep. <laughs> You're the only one here. I, uh, they I can't fell asleep talk. a little bit. They sorry. can't talk back at me right now. I need some more coffee, apparently. <laughs> so for our next um, webinar on Wednesday, uh, the plan is, is to get the chat window up and functioning so that you all can uh, chat with us and communicate with us back and forth. We'll try to take some questions towards the end uh, and have a little more dialogue <laughs> with, uh, with you while we're live. And then, of course, when you um, come back and watch it later, um, because these are all recorded and uploaded right to YouTube, um, please, if you want to ask any questions within the um, comments and remarks section uh, of the video, feel free to do so. Absolutely, or email us directly at support at roofsnap.com. Yep. All right, so let's continue on. I like this March 22nd image the best. Better than the, uh, the 2017 one, just because the shadows are so minimal. And to make this easy to draw, I want the image to be as square in the screen as possible. So I'm using both ridges at the same time and these cursor, well, these, these, these horizontal and vertical lines on my screen, just to center it right up there, I feel really good about the, the straightness of this image. All the way. 
and hit snap and start drawing in the upper right hand corner here. Snap and start drawing uh, essentially locks the project in uh, to that image. So if you've uh, accidentally hit it too soon or you're not very happy with the orientation of your locked in image, uh, you can always go back and uh, delete the project and start again uh, and, and re-snap uh, something, something a little better. Trina, I feel like I have a sneeze coming, so I might have to turn it over to you in a second. <laughs> as long as you don't get me stuck here. <laughs> no, I'm feeling much better today. Um, yeah, the sickness uh, hit the office, and uh, I think I've had the cold three times this winter, or four times this winter. All right, so now, as you see, we're in the pan and zoom mode, and we can really zoom in on this house. Um, I do like to start by drawing each roof kind of in a certain order. I like to start with the second story. And really, we only have uh, a derivation between the second story here and the lower garage first story here. You see the back area here is on the same slope. Just has a little rake that brings it up to the higher ridge. But before I make too many guesses, uh, I like to look at the supplementary imagery, which we're going to see here, these NESW buttons. We'll load in Bing imagery, but perhaps from a time period before this house was finished. You can see the neighborhood was under construction, <laughs> but I don't think this house was built yet. And you may find that to be true from time to time. Luckily, we have additional imagery down here. So this little um, icon of a, of a map is going to open up Apple's 3D imagery. I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And there is the house at the, end of the, at the end of the row there. Now in Apple's 3D imagery, we can do a bunch of things. So I've used two fingers to pinch to kind of zoom in on the house. And then if I rotate, I can actually begin to rotate around the house in a 3D environment. Specifically, you know, looking for any rear porches here, any, any uh, little kick-out roofs, any bay windows or stuff like that. Now, if I take two fingers again, and I just move them up and down on the screen together, I can change from a straight down view to more of a, um, well, more of a bird's eye view, I guess. Mm -hmm. So in this bird's eye view, we can do one of the critical uh, pieces of the inspection of the roof. We always recommend that you verify the pitch of the roof on site. But what we're going to do here is we're going to line up the ridge right with the vertical line. And I'm going to put it just above where the rakes meet the ridge and tap on the magnifying button in the upper left-hand corner. And I'm pretty close to straight. Maybe I could have gotten a tiny bit better. Now, once I've got the, the gable here right in the center of the screen, not zoomed in too far, I'm going to go ahead and tap on this uh, pitch gauge icon in the upper left-hand corner. Very cool. And as you can see, that 612 lines right up with those rakes. I would feel very comfortable now going ahead and labeling the front and rear slopes as 612. You can even go up here and put it on the other one. So actually, we're going to move the crosshairs up to that ridge where those uh, where that rake meets and measure that one separately because the 612 is not lining up quite as perfectly as uh, as it does down here all right so kind of wiggle it back and forth to make it uh, adjustable tap on the magnifying button Make sure you feel good about the straightness of your ridge. Could be a little better, probably always could be a little better, but I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. And then we bring our card down. And I'm glad we did that because mm -hmm. it looks like that that has a pitch change where when it comes off the front, actually, you know what? I think there might just be a little distortion in there, Katrina. Because you see how when I bring it out and actually line 
the arc of the 512 with the ridge, it doesn't, it actually goes out and it's high when it gets to the end. Mm -hmm. So let's bring the six up. So again, I think there's some distortion on this image, but I'm gonna round, I, I would never call it a five under those conditions because it feels like it's a five and a half. Yeah, better to... Better to go to the six yeah. than be short. Maybe we can check it from, yeah, from the, the other, other side. side. Absolutely. So that's the great thing about this Apple 3D imagery is you can zoom around the building and look at it from all different angles. All right, so again, trying to get as straight on that ridge as possible. You know, even that ridge looks like it's a little bit left of where the uh, peak of the rakes would be. Mm -hmm. And again, that's just some of the distortion that we're going to see in Apple's 3D imagery because they use photogrammetry to stitch this imagery together from different sources. Um, we'll go ahead and open up the pitch card again. And you may not be so meticulous as we are, but, you know, for our demonstration purposes, yeah. Yeah, definitely a Definitely 6 a 612. <laughs> 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 All right, so we've got six on the front and back. So let's come over to the front of the house here. Uh, let's get a, a quick uh, measurement on this front facing gable. Not as much ridge here. So a little harder sometimes to line up, but I think I did a pretty good job getting it straight. Very admirable. So once it gets above 12, not a lot changes. 14 is a bit steep, I can see that. 13, I feel like we're really close. And that 12, I actually think it is a 13. See how that 12 just feels a little light here on the left side when you run down that line? Mm -hmm. Then again, you have to use your, your best judgment here. It, it probably is a 12. Uh, just because so many of these dormers are 12-12. Rarely do you see a, you know, a 13, but let's go ahead and call it a 13 because that's what the measurement looks like. And then, of course, you would verify that on-site when, uh, you know, when you do your on-site inspection. So I'm going to X all the way back out of here. And now I've had a good look at the roof. Um, we've got another icon here on the right. This is going to open up Google Street View. Uh, so let's tap on that and see if Google Street View, they did. They made it down this road. Great. We're a little nervous because that's a yeah. new development. At the end of the call <laughs> there or the end of the road. All right. So we uh, have one more pitch tool environment here. So we have a street facing gable. Also, it's good to see here we've got these little ears on the left and right side of that front facing gable. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. So we're going to go ahead and tap on the pitch tool here. Zoom it in a little bit. It kind of pinched and zooming it gets it going so we can move it around the screen. So that's an 11. And there's the 12. And the 13 is definitely too much. Mm -hmm. So again, that's a good environment here. I'm going to call it a 12 now after having had a look at it here in this view. Yeah, it's nice to verify that. All right, so let's get going on drawing the roof. We've got the drawing uh, button here. This will be for labeling our edges. This will be for labeling our facets and putting in pitch. Uh, then we'll put some pins on the roof um, for inspection purposes and also for all the accessories that we have. Uh, and then, of course, you'll see I'll tap on the pan and zoom a lot as I go between drawing and panning and zooming the image around to make it a little easier. So let's start with the draw button. I put my finger on the screen. It brings out my drawing cursor. And as I move it around, Nothing happens until I go to my starting point, and with any other finger, uh, typically since I'm right-handed, I'll use my thumb on my left hand. I'm going to tap the screen, and it turns the cursor green. I don't have to tap for very long. Just a quick tap will do. And then when I get to the end of my line, I'm going to tap on the screen again, and that allows me to change direction and start a new line. And you'll see here I'm going to tap real close to the green circle every time, so you can see my finger up here there. Now I'm going to tap again and turn and come down that little short rake. Then I'm going to tap again and come across the ridge. 
Now, in order to complete this rear section, I have to tap two more times. So I'm going to tap here, change direction, and come all the way down. And you're going to notice that the green circle, as soon as I connect to that point where I started, is going to turn red. But not just the point where I started, any point. This is called snapping a line. So what I want to do is snap the line to that point where I started. Notice that it turns red and then tap the screen one more time, that locks that line together. So this rear section is drawn, and to show you that it's been drawn correctly, I'm gonna to tap to the facets, the facets mode, I guess we'll call it, and you see that it's uh, highlighted in blue. Perfect, and you'll notice uh, yeah. Jason didn't take his right finger off the screen that whole time he was drawing. Nope, just kind of drew around, like connecting the dots. Now those are a bunch of unneeded lines. So here's a point uh, to, to, to show you the undo and redo buttons. Uh, you draw something, you want to try it again, hit the undo a couple times, or if you wanted to go back, hit the redo, bring these lines off and on. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit because I want to show you this outside corner here. I feel like I didn't draw it quite far enough outside. And uh, don't fear, you, you don't, or don't worry, I guess. There's, there's nothing to fear in roof staff. <laughs> uh, you don't have to redraw this line. What you can do is just bring your cursor right to that point and leave it there uh, with your finger on the screen for about a second. And you see it picks it up. And now I can move it around and adjust it and bring it right to the spot where I want it. And then to leave it there, to sort of sit it there, I just tap on the screen again. It locks it in. And now I can move my finger away. So let's come down now here to the right side. And in order to start a line from an existing point, you'll see I put my cursor on it, turns into a big red circle, and then I tap the screen. Turns into a small red circle and I can start my line. Come down here, I typically like to draw to about the middle of the gutters for accuracy. Oh, you probably didn't see that, but I did just tap the screen. And then I'm gonna tap again, come up the valley, Tap again, come down the ridge. And if I tap too quickly, you may not be seeing um, the actual little finger icon that we have here showing up. But I promise, in between each line and at the end of every line, I do tap the screen as a sort of a mouse click, sort of a start and stop of each line. Now I'm gonna come down here, bring my cursor to that point where I wanna start that eave edge and bring that over and I'm not going to stop here, because that's a first story roof. I'm going to come all the way out to the edge of the eave of that second story. Switch to Google Street View real quick and show you the line that I just drew came from this inside corner where the valley comes down all the way over to the end of the eave, and now I'm going to turn up and go up the rake. Then later, I'm going to come back and redraw from this ridge down the step wall. So I'm going to have the upper rake edge and the lower step wall with just a very minimal overhang. You see, we don't have much of an overhang here on this roof, so I'm going to draw those lines really tight together. Then separately from that, you're going to see when I draw this first story section, I'm going to draw the rake up, and it's going to turn uh, to, and be a very short um, horizontal line. We would call that uh, an apron uh, or just a, a horizontal wall. And then it's going to turn and go up the step wall there to another wall all the way across the front. We'll label the horizontal walls are labeled a light blue color. And um, the diagonal step walls are labeled a dark blue color. So you'll notice it'll go from rake to, to wall to step wall back to wall as it goes across the front. For those of you who have been diagramming roofs, whether it be on graph paper or in some sort of a CAD software, um, this is going to be very familiar to you. Uh, if you haven't been diagramming roofs, um, then you know, you'll, you'll, you'll pick it up. Um, trust me, after like the fifth, sixth, seventh roof, you'll be a pro. Yeah. So this line here that I'm drawing, that's the rake that comes up. And then that step wall, we're going to draw just a little pocket line here to connect it. And then we're going to draw that step wall all the way down to where it connects to the eave of that slightly lower second story roof here on the left. And then we're going to come across the front of the eave. 
And then we're going to come right up and connect there at the ridge. All right, so I talked about this lower first story section here, right above the garage. So I'm going to start on the outside corner of the, of the eave. Come across that eave first. And then we have the rake that we come up. And if you remember, when we looked at it in Google Street View, we had just a little piece of wall. And then we had another step wall that came up here. And I'm going to go past, because again, we want to draw in the overhangs, even though these overhangs are tiny. Then I'm going to turn and come left. And none of those lines are connected. None of those, see, I didn't snap to that point. I didn't snap to any of those points there. I just drew underneath of it. Come all the way over to the edge. That's my wall across the front. And then come down my rake down the left side. Pan and zoom. Bring it all back into the screen here. And we'll see I've got all my lines drawn for the roof. I'm going to come in here, grab this ridge, straighten this one up a little bit. And we are at, we do have just a tiny bit of distortion on this roof. And we can tell because the length of the rake going to the left versus the length of the rake going to the right aren't quite exactly the same. But where this roof facet's a little heavier, this one's a little lighter, and it should balance out to be almost exact, Katrina. Mm -hmm. Now the next step of drawing the roof here is the, uh, the edges function. So we're going to go to edges, and you'll see we have all of the different roofing labels that I'm sure you're familiar with. Eaves, rakes, ridges, hips, valleys. But if we tap a second time on any of these, we're going to see that there are additional sub-labels. So let's talk about adding ice and water shield and eave edge. Eave edge is a subline label that we have connected the drip edge metal to. So whenever we label eave edge, we're going to get a running total of how many feet of drip edge that we need if we use roof snap to create the estimate. Nice, as well as ice and water shield and gutters. Yep. You can add gutters, it'll keep a running total. And then if you select five inch gutters or six inch gutters or half round gutters or whatever gutter product that you upload into the system, it can be connected to the running total of the gutter si gutters subline label. Great. Right. So we're starting to kind of think about the materials needed and things like that. Yeah. Well, we're starting to think about what kind of roof is going to be installed even while we're measuring it now. Now, if you're an insurance adjuster and you use another software program to um, put together the pricing, like Xactimate or something like that, then uh, you may not need these additional subline labels. These are only relevant if you're using the estimating platform here in RoofSnap to go to the next step, which in this demo today, since we're really going into the nitty gritty details of, of measuring, uh, we won't build an estimate today, but please look at our other videos. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we always do the full measuring and estimating. We've talked about good, better, best style estimates. We've talked about creating templates. Um, so you'll be able to gather more of that information on the estimate portion in some of our other videos. Dive a little further yep. into all the documents you can generate, material yep. orders. And we'll like generate that. the one document today. We'll generate the measurement report on this particular roof, but I think that's where we'll leave it at today. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and add ice and water shield and eve edge. And now that I have the red uh, square here, and you see the little subline labels are showing up in my gray sidebar, I can just go ahead and begin to tap on all of the eave edge lines. And I'm going to try to get the tiny little ones. There we go. Sometimes you have to zoom in on those when they're, when they're so short. Now I'm going to hit the back button and go and select my rakes. But let's also put the rake edge label so that we can um, assign drip edge on the rakes as well. And I'm going to tap right in here, right in this gray area, make that go over to the right, kind of minimizing that sidebar. Now just tapping on all the rake edges. You can see my cursor appear. I typically tap right in the middle of each line, try to tap right on where the measurement value is for each rake. And that little one there, got it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think I was going to get it. Now let's jump down to the ridge. I'll tap on the ridge once, tap on it again, and let's add a ridge vet label. Again, this is going to keep a running total of how much ridge vet we need. We're going to put it on the main ridge, the front ridge, 
and the left ridge. Now, if I didn't want ridge vent on this front section here, I could unhighlight ridge vent, tap on this line again, and remove ridge vent. Now I only have ridge vent totaling for the two primary ridges on the upper roof section. Okay. We'll go ahead and add that back in. Hips. Well, there are no sub-labels for hips, and I have no hips on this roof, uh, so these hips don't apply. <laughs> And they also oh, don't come lie. on, that is hilarious. <laughs> These hips don't apply. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> we like to have fun. That just came just, right off the top of my head. I know, that was great. I was, was like, something good. has to run. <laughs> I'm going to use that in every demo. <laughs> oh, great. We started a trend. <laughs> All right, so as you may have seen here, as I was tapping through, we've gone to valleys now. And let's highlight the ice and water shield. Of course, we want 36 inches of ice and water shield here in the valleys. In Columbus, Ohio, we get a lot of snow uh, in your area. Um, you know, you'll be able to uh, make that uh, determination if you need ice and water shield at the uh, valleys or maybe at the step walls or maybe along your roof to wall transitions. Uh, up here, we like to put it everywhere. And in doing so, I can demonstrate. Um, but before I go to that step wall, I think it's really important here to go ahead and zoom in on this area. These lines are so close together, I don't want to accidentally relabel my, um, my rake mm -hmm. as a step. So now I'll go back, grab my step wall, add step flashing, and add ice and water shield, and tap on both of those lines. And then, let's see, I've got another step wall right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that one now. And then the last two lines, are going to be the light blue lines, which uh, we call just wall. It's the horizontal, the horizontal wall flashing. And if I tap on that a second time, you see that if I wanted to, I could add apron flashing. Uh, if we're going to need to change that out, or even refurbish or resecure the existing apron, uh, it depends what product you have connected to the uh, apron flashing subline here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and plan on some ice and water shield as well, just to make sure that we never have a leak in these locations. So Jason, what happens if you accidentally label a line, mislabel a line in the edges mode? Well, that's a really good question. So as one example, this rake here, currently it's 4.1 feet. But as I'll show you when we switch to the facets mode, we haven't put in the pitch yet. As soon as we put in the pitch value of this front slope, any non-horizontal lines are going to grow. They're going to get longer. So this 4.1 rake, it's probably going to be more like five or almost six feet long, taking into account. If by any chance I had labeled this as an eave, one, it's not going to get longer, but two, it's going to calculate additional eave edge um, that, that wouldn't be there. And so for the sake of starter and for the sake of... Um, um, metal at the rakes, if it was a different profile than the metal at the eaves, um, it would throw off my quantities. And as I began to add materials, um, I would have the wrong quantity of materials based on having the wrong lines labeled, gotcha. or the, the, the lines labeled incorrectly. Um, since I'm zoomed in so far, see how my cursor tail shows me that that line isn't quite straight, probably not a big deal, certainly isn't going to affect um, the accuracy of my measurements uh, substantially. But if you're picky like I am, you can really come in here to the corners and make your corners perfectly square, left and right, up and down. Um, I'm not aware of any other software uh, that allows you to be this precise in your, uh, in your roof measurements. Zooming all the way back out, you know, as I think about it, Katrina, there's one pitch value we didn't get while we were in there. Right. We don't know that front slope there. Everything else was a 6 and 12, right? Mm -hmm. So this one, if we put the horizontal line on the outside corner there, you know what? That's going to be tough. We've got we to gotta be on the eave and the outside corner, really close to the top of that little rake edge. What do you think? Did I get close enough? Yeah, I think that's pretty close. All right, we want to be straight because if we're at a if we're not straight on, then we're really going to get a messed up pitch value when we drop the card. Feels like a four to me, like and that's what I would have expected to be anyway. Great. 
So we're going to click all the way back out and go into facets mode here. So let's start with those uh, sixes. So I'm going to tap right here on pitch. I'm going to come down here to the 612. Tap on that. You see it's actually highlighted and loaded into this little sidebar here. So we always know what we're labeling because whether it's a line label or facet label or even a pin, it's going to show up right here in the sidebar. So now I'll tap on the front one here and it turns it to a six. I'm going to tap on this one here, turns it to a six. Now I've got a bunch of zeros here, Katrina. Which one goes to which, you might ask? I have no idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you get used to it after a while. It's not uh, something that you'll have to do, but if you, if, uh, you, that you'll have to do repeatedly. But when you're looking at a scenario like this, and you're like, you know what, which zero goes to which facet, come over here and tap on the Remove button, and start tapping on the zero, and you'll see which one it applies to. There we go. So that's the one that we want to be the 6. So we'll go back to pitch. We'll come down to 6, 12, and we'll label that one as a 6. Now I'll go back to pitch again, grab the 4, label that lower front section as a 4, and finally go back to 12, 12, and label the left, right side of that front-facing sort of gable. And that looks good. Great. One thing I do want to point out here in the sure. facets mode, um, we can really tell that we've drawn in those overhangs correctly, even though they're uh, pretty small. We might want to zoom in just a little bit to get a better view. But when you're in the facets mode, you'll see that double uh, that double shading. So this right. this darker blue color lets us know that this is in fact an overhang, and we've drawn that correctly. Um, so I just wanted to to point that out. You should see that double shading. Uh, for your overhangs. You know, you also made me think of um, one of the little unintentionally hidden functions within RoofSnap. Mm -hmm. So let's say that we had drawn out this ridge, but for some reason it didn't quite connect. You'll see there that line isn't connected. We, of course, we've got the real ridge there, and I'm not going to worry about the real ridge and deleting it right now. But let's say we needed to get rid of this line, but we had drawn it. 20 lines ago. Mm. Man, I really don't want to hit the undone, the undone, the undo button. <laughs> the undone button. No, yeah. I don't want to hit the undo button 20 times to get yeah. back to that line. Right? What a pain. So switch to edges here. Bring your cursor, and what you're going to do is press and hold right on the line. It's going to open up this little dialog window, allowing you to go ahead and delete that edge. So I'm going to tap on delete edge, and that line has disappeared. Great. We also talked about, you know, I was uh, a little exaggerative unintentionally, so that when we went on the facets up to 412 on this section here, this line was 4.1, and you'll notice it, it didn't get a lot longer because it's, a not, it's not a very long line to begin with, uh, but increased from 4.1 to 4.3 feet in length when we added the 412 pitch value. So software calculated that up for us yeah. and adjusted that length. Now, at this point, if all you need is measurements and you're not using the estimating platform, um, you could potentially be done with the drawing and go on. Um, but even if you aren't going to use it for estimating, we have a lot of customers who do inspections of houses, <laughs> storm inspections, commercial roofing inspections, inspections for property management companies. And that's where these inspection pins are really going to come in handy. Um, when you're inspecting, you're usually looking for wind damage, hail damage, leak areas. Um, maybe you need to put a photo of a specific um, type of flashing detail um, right onto the report that you're going to give to the decision maker, or you're going to give to the homeowner. So that's where these pins come in handy. Let's start with one with wind damage. So we'll grab wind damage. We're going to put it right here on the ridge of that front dormer. I'm sure that that catches some wind. Press and hold on that pin, and you'll see that we can choose an image that's going to open up our photos library, or we're going to take a photo. So what I'm going to do is just take a photo here of my coffee mug on our conference table. And now just imagine that that is some wind-related damage of the roof that you just took with your iPad or your iPhone mm -hmm. right up on the roof. 
tap use photo on the bottom right. Now it's pinned that image right to that section of the roof. And that's going to show up on our report that we generate here in a few minutes. Let's do, um, let's see. All of the inspection pins um, have no material or labor attached to them. They're just solely for marking up damage or, or uh, problems with the roof. But when we go to every other category, and again, this can all be customized. We can add additional categories. We can add additional items within each category. But let's talk about off-ridge vents, and uh, let's see. This roof doesn't actually have any off-ridge vents. It looks like it's all, excuse me, off, yeah, off-ridge vents. It looks like it's all ridge vent on this one. But let's go ahead and just put one solar power vent here on the roof. In doing so, we've labeled the roof where that vent's going to go. But we've also added it to the estimate. There's labor and material pricing associated with that pin. And when we tap it on the roof, it builds it right to the estimate for us. We don't have to worry about adding it as an additional item when we're, when we're putting together the parts and pieces of the estimate. It's really convenient. This pin as well functions like every other pin in that you can take a photo or edit notes. So let's go ahead and edit some notes for this pin. Um, there we go, just waiting for my Bluetooth keyboard to kick in. Install um, solar vent here. Maybe some notes for the crew. And then let's add another photo. And one last thing, let's come back. Oh, see, I must have bumped the screen up here and dropped a phantom pin, so let's delete that <laughs> one. Oh, let's delete the other one. Careful where you touch the screen when you have pins mode enabled. Fact. All right, there are no phantom pins that I can see. Do you see any? No, I think. Okay. Thank you deleted them. All right. Last but not least, in pins mode, let's go ahead and press on that other one. We can view the image that we already took right within the screen. Right. And then we can also go ahead and add some notes to this. So, uh, wind damage at ridge. And this can be done, this pinning can be done um, you know, on your iPad when you're up on the roof, or you can um, sync your iPad and your iPhone, uh, and then take your iPhone up on the roof and take these images with a smaller device. Great. Which might be, uh, you know, I've got a Pro right now, the big one, the big iPad Pro. You might uh, be using an Air or one of, you know, one of the 7 point or 9.7 inch. Those are, those are a lot easier to manage when you're up on the roof. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the really, really big one can sometimes be a little precarious, climbing a ladder with a, such a large iPad. But once you have all the pins on the roof, uh, which maybe we should add just a couple more, let's go with plumbing boots, one to three inch. There's one there, there's one there. And I think those other ones, Katrina, if I'm not mistaken, look like um, either a mixture of Kitchen vents. Do we have any kitchen vents in here? We may not have any in the sample office, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Those little flapper vents for uh, kitchen exhaust and bathroom exhaust. Right. I think that's what those are. Uh, but again, during your on-site inspection is when you'll really be able to tell. Um, if there were hail damage on this roof um, and on this property, one thing that might come in handy is the comb AC condenser fins. For those of you who are doing insurance work, let's just drop one right there on top of the AC unit. And that should be good enough. So let's go ahead and hit the done button in the upper right hand corner and save all the work. Right. And you can actually hit that done button at any point yep. and come back into the roof snap and make adjustments or um, add additional things. Um, so don't be afraid to yeah. tap the done button. That's essentially the save. <laughs> sure. I mean, if you've got a really complicated roof, rather than um, you know spend 45 minutes drawing it or something, you know, really big 80 square, you know, 60, 70 facet roof, taking the risk of, um, you know, any iOS app will or has at some point crashed. 
and uh, and roof snap is very stable but rather than taking the risk uh, you know if you've been drawing for 20 minutes click on that or tap on that done button and uh, save the roof snap um, here we go Katrina so the uh, suggested shingle cutting waste has popped up once the uh, drawing is saved great um, for those of you who have done any insurance work you may or may not know that uh, Xactimate for example has a um, cut waste uh, calculator uh, we built our own here uh, using a, a formula uh, based on valley hips rakes and step and also the complexity of the roof number of facets in relationship to the overall size of the roof um, this does not account for your hip and ridge cap and your starter shingle excuse me and your starter shingles um, the software will count for those separately let's go ahead and tap on the yes button Katrina to accept that Unless I want to change that. Exactly. So we'll go directly to measurements. And if you want to manage and customize your own waste percentage for this, you could go ahead in here and change it to, say, 15% or maybe 12%. And it's going to readjust your total squares based on how much waste you put into this box here. Scrolling down through, you can take a look at your measurements. If you needed to add downspouts, since downspouts is a measurement we can't get from top down, it's something that you'll always have to type in manually, uh, so put it in that field. But then to put all of this into um, sort of a presentation, sort of a, a report, we're going to go to the Documents section and generate a PDF sketch report. So we'll see the sketch report here, and we'll tap on Generate New right underneath Sketch Report. And this is pulling in all that information we just laid out in the roof snap, uh, our notes and photos, and, and all of that into a nice PDF for us. Yep. Imagine uh, once you uh, are a roof snap customer and you have your company logo mm -hmm. uploaded into our software, that this document will appear with your logo right in the upper right hand corner instead of the logo, uh, our logo, which you're going to see right here. So this is a six or seven page PDF. It'll have the customer information at the top, your company information and logo at the top. And that primary image, whether you use the Google or the Bing or the Apple image, is going to show up right here at the top. And of course, we use the near map image. And then northeast, southwest aspect images from Bing. However, Bing's images are, as, as you may or may not know, they're a little bit older. Um, so we don't have a house <laughs> in those images. Then we're going to have pitch breakdown, uh, and you're going to you're going to um, want to reference this, uh, especially if there are any uh, steep charges related to your estimate. Of course, those will be pulled in automatically if you use Roof Snap to estimate your uh, your project. And then we're going to come on down here and have a look at the measurement breakdown. We can see the sub labels that have been placed on each line: ice and water shield at the eaves, and eave edge, and rake edge, and so forth and all of the individual line measurements. Of course, we get a little bit of overlap when lines are really close together, but that's okay because when we come down here, we'll see that we have totals on all of the individual line measurements, um, running, running totals, you might say. And under category, we have running totals for all of the labels that we used, even when they were on multiple different lines. So for example, we put ice and water shield at the step walls, at the roof to wall flashing, um, in the valleys um, and at the eave edges. And so with all of those combined, we know we need 204 linear feet of ice and water shield, uh, assuming a 36 inch application. We have total squares on the left um, and actual squares, uh, pitch breakdowns and totals for those. And then as we go down, we can actually see each roof facet uh, subtotaled out by surface area. And then all of the accessory pins that we placed on the roof. So these are going to show the location. The crew will quickly know where that AC unit is back around the corner on the right, um, where the new power vent's going to be installed, and also the photos that you took of the wind damage at the ridge and a photo of where the solar vent is going to be installed as well. Additionally, uh, if you had added notes or photos for those plumbing boots or that comb AC, uh, that would show up on this document as well. 
Now, getting this document into the hands of, say, the adjuster or your production manager uh, or potentially the customer, under certain circumstances, you might send this to the customer. We're going to tap on the share button in the upper right hand corner here. Share, you'll be able to email the document, save it to your drive, your Google Drive, your company Dropbox, iCloud, or even open it up in another um, app on your iPad, like PDF Expert, uh, or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and click the Done button. Back to our website here. Jump over to our pricing page. Go to prices. As we scrolled through this before, we talked about Sketchos. Uh, but really just wanted to show you that we do have discounted pricing for customers who want to um, move to one of our annual two users build annually, you'll see that the price is just about half what it is for the single user who wants to pay month to month, or the two user who wants to pay month to month would be just the $99 per user per month. Uh, so give us a call if you have any questions about becoming a subscriber. Uh, but last but not least, no one pays for RoofSnap without trying it first. So if you think that this might be a good fit, if you think you might like the idea of uh, drawing roofs uh, and measuring them and estimating them right within RoofSnap or ordering them from us and then using the software to estimate the project, sign up right on our home uh, screen on RoofSnap.com for a 14-day free trial. Uh, Katrina will get you all set up. Um, we'll offer more and more of these webinars. And, uh, and then if you do uh, end up becoming a customer, of course, we'll help you uh, with one-on-one -on -one training to get your office set up your documents, uh, and we never charge for training, um, virtual training, I guess we should call it, yeah. online training, <laughs> video calls, or come into our office. Um, these are always free options for you. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. Um, Katrina, any final thoughts? I'm losing my voice again. I can tell. Oh, no. It's uh, <coughs> gone downhill. Um, really just uh, wanted to highlight our contact info. So uh, good call. if you are, uh, of course, in this neck of the woods and would like to come visit us uh, here at our Easton location, uh, please do so. We are more than, more than happy to have you. Uh, and if not, uh, you can always give us a call at 877-ROOFSNAP. And we so, are happy to hear from you and answer any questions you might have. Cool. Now, if you um, want to see more videos or if you, uh, if you liked what we did today, Give us a thumbs up, or um, I don't know. We're gonna have let's see over there somewhere. We're gonna have some little uh, boxes that you can check on. So thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Yep, have a great day. Have a good one. Bye. See you next time.